Hey everybody, it's me, Tom Dalton, from the PBS TV show Under the Radar, here with two very good friends, Jim Edelman, my cohort in TV crime, and Fred Molnar, who is with the MEDC, which is the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Um, and Fred, you've been with them for a while. Um, if you could, just take a second to explain how important the work is that the MEC, MEDC does. Oh my gosh, yeah, the MEDC, I think, is critical to the, to the function uh, of the state. Uh, the MEDC does a lot of things. Um, one of the things is the Pure Michigan campaign, which many of you are familiar with, uh, but it does a lot of things like trying to attract businesses here to the state, helping businesses that are already here grow. What I do for the MEDC, I have a, a little subsection. The group that I work with is the very early stage tech entrepreneurs. So anyone who's trying to develop a product that has technology wrapped around it, and, want, and wants to hopefully sell that product or turn it into a company, that's where we help. Yeah, I, that is so important because a lot of people, when they're getting started, they're not, they're not, some of these people are, they're inventors or they're innovators, but they're not business people. So they don't know where to get started. So it's such a valuable thing to have you guys at the MEDC helping them get into the business world. Well, thank you. I, I, I agree with that 100%. Um, you know, not only just, regular people like ourselves that may have ideas uh, and may not have the business acumen, but also in universities. So we do a lot with the, with the universities throughout the state of Michigan. Um, primarily, uh, I'd, I'd consider them research universities like the University of Michigan or Michigan State, Wayne State, Michigan Tech up at Houghton Hancock, and a lot of very, very smart people at these universities. And they may be great in physics or electronics or whatever, and they come up with a great idea, but but they have no idea at all what to do and to start a business. Yeah, you where know, were you? Where were you and Jim and I started this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very low tech in our world. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I heard this stat a couple of years ago, and I I really found it earth shattering from a you feel good about Michigan standpoint. There is so much tech that happens in Michigan. We actually outstrip uh, Silicon Valley for what they're doing. Right? I mean, it's pretty yeah. Well, well, well I, I guess it depends on what your measurement of is, uh -huh. right? Okay, so we have um, certainly uh, when you look at Silicon Valley from an, from an investment standpoint, there's much more dollars there than there are here to invest in tech companies. But considering the number of engineers that we have in Michigan that come out of our great universities and the like, there is a lot of technology here, yes. Well, also, if you could tell us a little bit about the Michigan Life Science uh, and Innovation Center. You're a... Uh, you're pretty important to that, aren't you as well? Oh, I, I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, so the MEDC, there is a, uh, a, a beautiful uh, incubator slash accelerator uh, in Plymouth, Michigan called the Michigan Life Science and Innovation Center, uh, known as MILSIC, sort of the acronym of it. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, exa yeah, exactly. So, um, but it is, uh, it's about 70,000 square feet, uh, and there's like 22 startup companies there right now, uh, range from a company called Aspirvax that is actually working on a COVID uh, oral vaccine. So typically vaccines are injectable. They're working on a vaccine that's an oral uh, presentation, which would make it easier for, for you know, young people and everything else. That's just an example of a company that's there right now. Could they make it chocolate flavored? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I can ask. <laughs> you see where we're focused on, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and I know this is, you know, these incubators are fantastic, but with all of us working out of home, what are some pros and cons to setting up a business through one of these incubators? Yeah, um, you, you know, there's, there's, no, um, there's no way to avoid human contact when you're setting up a business, right? I mean, it's impossible because the reality is any business, people are still buying from people. And, you know, I, you can argue, you know, Amazon and others as successful they are, as easy as it is. But when it comes to starting a business, it's still the human interaction. It's still because you can't do it all yourself, right? So you have to have people that support you. You have to have, or you have to develop um, connections where they can, uh, where you can develop for financial support and the like. And those are all based on personal interactions and trust. And so you can only get so far doing it virtually as we're doing here, but it still comes down to a trust factor and a face-to-face -face and, and a lot of times a handshake. 
you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that because the key word there is trust. Um, you're right. It, given this whole COVID calamity that we're dealing with right now, yeah, we're all forced to do a lot of this virtually, but you're right. When all is said and done, um, it's, it's all about people. It's all about connections and people. And, and that's what these life science companies are all about. Yeah, ab 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 absolutely. And, you know, I think Michigan is positioned really well. well. Um, as you know, we, we've pretty much been an auto-centric, automobile-centric, um, certainly in southeastern Michigan. I think western Michigan, quite frankly, has done a better job of being a little more diversified. Right. Um, but life sciences, because of the COVID thing, the, if there is a silver lining in all this, is that I think it's bringing the focus back on life sciences and on medical devices and the like, because people saw and are still experiencing what happened, right? And they saw, well, we're dependent on China for, for certain items. It's like, I mean, I think most of us would probably think that's ridiculous, right? That we have to depend on, on some country on the other side of the world for our personal protection and things like that. So I think some of the, the positives of this will impact Michigan in a positive way in it from a manufacturing standpoint. Well, and that's what's great about seeing some of the local companies who've done that PPE pivot, and mm -hmm. you know, they've kind of started doing some products that really fit into the whole PPE world of uh, personal protection. Um, yes, absolutely. We've talked to a few of those over the last uh, several weeks. Mm -hmm. you know, what does the, the future, uh, the economic future of the state look like to you? And how can we invest in it? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> the TV show's not making us a lot of money. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's a, that, that, that's a tough question because there's so many variables, as you know, there's just so many variables. Um, but I, I, I do think it's bright. Um, you know, th there's some macro things that are out of our control, right? That, that I don't, you know, I mean, if things go south, either with the federal government or the huge amount of debt that the, that the national uh, federal government uh, takes on, things like that, those things that we can't control that. But I think from a Michigan perspective, it's sort of control the controllables, right? And I think we're doing a really good job of taking the talent that we have, the expertise that we have in the state uh, and, and focusing it. So the MEDC just recently put together a strategic plan, a five-year strategic plan. And some of the things we're focusing on uh, are our mobility, okay? Uh, automotive and mobility, which is a strength of ours. Uh, advanced manufacturing, which is a strength of ours. We do manufacturing really, really well, probably as, as well as anyone in the country and probably anyone in the world. Um, we're also focusing on medical devices, okay? And we do really well because medical devices is not only the technology and the, and the software around it, but there's a lot of manufacturing involved in medical devices. If you think of uh, the company Stryker, right, which makes artificial knees and shoulders and all those kind of things, that's all advanced manufacturing, which we really do well. So I think take away the external stuff that we can control. I think, this, I think Michigan's in a very good position to, uh, to rebound quite well. Well, three things for you, Fred. One, thank you personally for everything you do to help everybody moving forward. Thanks to the MEDC for everything they do. And I just want to extend an invitation. If you ever get tired of hanging out with smart people, you can always come on a UTR shoot with us because we eat real good and we have a lot of fun, but there's not a lot of brain power involved. <laughs> I, I was going to tease you. I don't have any food to show you. I, I can't sit down at a table and eat with you guys. <laughs> we'll show you plenty of food if you come with us. <laughs> there you go. I, I would love to. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And uh, we're, I, I'm just down the road from Plymouth. So I might uh, swing by and say, hey, one day. Hey, I, I'd love to. If, if you guys ever want to come by and take a look, see what we're doing in early tech entrepreneur space. It's really exciting. There's some great stuff going on. And if some of your um, listeners and viewers want more information, if they could go to, to michiganbusiness.org forward slash entrepreneurship, it will have all of the programs that we, that the MEDC has uh, related to entrepreneurship. And there's quite a few. Perfect. Awesome. And we're putting your home number down below so they can get a hold of you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Thank you, guys.